Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Johanning and I am the Undergraduate Academic Advising Supervisor of the Academic Advising Office here within the Department of Economics. Thanks so much for joining us today as we talk about the upcoming Certificate in Econ Analytics. We are here to learn more about this certificate because ideally you're watching this video because you care about the economic approach to data analytics and you're not already declared in the economics major. During this video, we're going to discuss what the certificate in economic analytics means and the value that it has in the workplace. We're also going to be taking a look at the curriculum and the specific requirements that you'll be needing to complete this certificate. Finally, you will hear from two of our professors about the courses that they do teach for this certificate already. We hope that you're able to take a lot away from this video. I will now pass it on to Professor Rule to talk more about why he is specifically interested in this certificate. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Professor Kim Rule, and I teach in the Certificate for Economic Analytics program here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'd like to just say a couple words about why I'm excited about this program, why I think this is such a great program. And it really boils down to the synergies, the complementarities that exist between data analytics and the economic way of thinking. I, I think it's no surprise to say that modern decision making is driven by data, whether you're in a private sector firm, whether you're in the government, whether you're working for a nonprofit, whether you're doing research. We look at the data and we use that to help us make decisions. Now, what's great is that economics, economic theory, provides this amazing framework for how to think about decisions, how to weigh trade-offs, how to think about what to, what to do in a, in a situation. So when you combine that way of thinking with a good understanding of data and what it can and can't do, it becomes a very powerful tool for making important decisions. And so the point of this program is to give you those tools, your economic tools, your data analytics tools, and to put you in a position to be able to make informed decisions. For some of you who maybe aren't going to go on to actually do data analytics themselves, understanding what's going into a data analysis, you know, you're going to be working with people who are working with data, you're going to be listening to people tell you what the data say, understanding their process, some of the limitations and some of the strengths of their, of their process, and being able to then makes you a better decision maker as well as a better consumer of data analytics. So that's kind of what we want to give you in this program, and I think we can have some fun at the same time. Thanks, Professor Earl. Hi, y'all. My name is Nick Burke, and I'm one of the undergraduate academic advisors here in the economics department. And today, I'll be walking through the curriculum so you'll know exactly what you need to do in order to complete the certificate. And so as we take a look here at the requirements, you'll notice that the certificate is broken up into four different areas. That first area being the microeconomics requirement. In order to complete this requirement, you'll need to enroll in either Econ 301 or Econ 311. Econ 301 being intermediate microeconomic theory and Econ 311 being the advanced treatment of intermediate microeconomic theory. The second area of the certificate is that statistics requirement. Now there are three different options within the, certi uh, within the statistics requirement and you only need to complete one. That first route being taking Econ 310, our Econ stats class. That's the first route. The second option you can choose to do is by completing stats 240 and 340. So you would need to complete both of those stats classes. The third option is completing stats 303 and stat 333. So again, the third option being those two classes, 303 and 333. So again, there are three different options you can choose from to satisfy the statistics requirement. You only need to choose one. The third area of the certificate is going to be the econometrics requirement. And you can satisfy this requirement by completing Econ 400 or Econ 410. Both courses um, are accepted. You can only do one of those. And the fourth and final area of the certificate is that data-related economic elective. And so you can satisfy this requirement by, again, completing one of the following options. Econ 460, economic forecasting. Econ 570, which is the fundamentals of data analytics for economists, and then Econ 695, topics in economic data analysis. Now with Econ 695, there's actually multiple sections that fall under the Econ 695 umbrella. And so currently we have two different courses that are listed as Econ 695. So 
again, there are three courses you can complete, but you only need to choose one. And for the total number of credits for the certificate, it'll vary depending on which one of those statistic options you choose. Um, and so it can be as few as 14 credits and as many as 20 credits. And so those are the requirements for the certificate. If you have any questions, you can feel free to meet with us advisors. Otherwise, I'm gonna pass it off to Professor Rule and Professor McKelvey to talk more about some of the uh, electives that are offered here for the certificate. Hello, my name is Christopher McKelvey. I'm a lecturer here in the Department of Economics, uh, primarily teaching statistics and econometrics. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference. We have two versions of econometrics in the department, and um, taking one of them will be a requirement of completing the certificate in economic uh, analytics. And so I wanted to chat a little bit about, well, why do we have two and what are the difference between the two, as it's sort of a choice you'd be making as part of the certificate. So one of the classes is Econ 410, which is a, a class that is really designed to help the people who take it to prepare themselves potentially for taking graduate classes in, in economics. So perhaps you're thinking you might want to get a master's degree in economics or a PhD in economics. Econ 410 is really one of the stepping stones that you'd want to take to help make that leap to being ready to complete graduate level uh, economics. It's one of the more mathematical classes in the department. To give you a sense for, for that, uh, here is one of the classic uh, proofs that you would do in, in Econ 410. Um, just to sort of illustrate the level of mathematics that are required. Um, here, you know, we might um, use the properties of summation to write out a lot of, uh, you know, to rewrite the estimator in a more convenient way. So that we could ultimately use the properties of expected value down here to show that the expected value of the estimator is equal to the truth. In other words, to prove the unbiasedness of the OLS slope estimator. So here we're really being careful to make assumptions and show under those assumptions whether or not we have a biased or an unbiased estimator. Now that is different than Econ 400, where you would learn this result, but you would learn it as a result and you would never prove it using first principles. So Econ 410 tends to be a better match for people who want that kind of theoretical background, um, whereas Econ 400 is more oriented towards, towards doing. You learn the key theory of econometrics without actually proving it. So um, if you're interested you know, maybe in going straight to a job after a college, then that's probably a better match. If you're thinking about graduate studies, but thinking about graduate studies in a more applied discipline like data analytics, then probably Econ 400 would be the better match. And then both of these classes would unlock the door to Econ 460, which is uh, another class we offer in the department that focuses on econometrics. It's sort of a more advanced form of econometrics where we're interested in time series data and in ultimately using time series data to forecast uh, economic trends. So that's a bit of an overview of classes in the department. Uh, thanks so much. I teach Economics 570, Fundamentals of Data Analytics for Economists. And this course focuses on two of the most important parts of data analytics. First one is how to take data, data that's squirreled away in spreadsheets, hidden on websites, maybe it's even in PDFs or on sheets of paper, how to take data from all those places and put them onto your computer in a usable form. That's so often the biggest obstacle for using data uh, in a smart way, is just getting it, getting it into one place and into a usable, uh, usable form. So we're gonna start there, and that's gonna take about half of the course. Right? And we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna learn the Python programming language. Python, because it's an extremely widely used program, uh, programming language in, in business and in research. So I'm gonna give you a set of tools that you can take with you, uh, when, you leave the, when you leave the university. We're gonna use that as our main tool, along with some packages you know, that extend Python and make it more powerful for our purposes. And we're going to work on how to get data into the computer, how to shape it, how to transform it, how to clean it, how to take different data sets and merge them together so we can do even more powerful things by bringing different data together uh, and to bear onto the uh, question at hand. We're going to introduce ourselves to very commonly used econ and finance data sets. Right, so you're going to have some experience with commonly used data as you, uh, as you leave here. 
Then the second half of the course is going to focus on communicating results. And in particular, we're going to focus on the idea of visualization. So visualization being the kind of catch-all for things like plots, figures, maps, infographics, uh, animations, right? the visual ways to take the potentially millions of data points that we have and squeeze them down into just one concentrated idea that's very easy for other people to understand. That's a lot harder than it seems. You know, really good data visualization, you look at it and it seems effortless and it seems extremely clear. Likely a lot of work went into that. So we're going to spend a lot of time just sitting around thinking hard about how to make good visualizations that get points across and make it easy for people to understand what uh, the total of all of the hard work we've been doing in the background are. And so open up the New York Times, open up the Wall Street Journal, and you'll see that the modern kind of journalism, modern uh, storytelling is done with data. And so that's kind of what we're after. Uh, here's an example. This is taken right from class. Class is a very hands-on uh, experience. You're going to be sitting in class with your laptop open. I'm going to be projecting my computer on the board behind me, and we're going to be writing code together in class. We're going to be working through examples in class and kind of trying to figure stuff out, walking around helping you debug your programs, and uh, we'll be working together on projects. So here's an example. Uh, this was now I've taken data from different places. There's some census data uh, telling me about the geography of the counties of, of Wisconsin. There's some different data on vote counts. So this is the presidential vote count from 2016 by county in Wisconsin. And then we're going to bring that together and create this figure. Right? So this figure is meant to talk to us about how uh, different parts of the state voted either Republican or Democrat. Um, now, you kind of look at the figure and say, okay, there's some, there's some color involved. Uh, the, you can see the shape of Wisconsin. Uh, actually, a lot of thought went into this figure, right? Like, why red and blue? Why did I choose colors red and blue? Well, that wasn't random. It wasn't because I think red and blue are pretty. It wasn't because I think it makes it look nice. Uh, it's because red is traditionally the color of the Republican Party. Blue is traditionally the color of the Democrat Party. We're talking about red states, blue states, red counties, blue counties, right? Those are kind of meaningful uh, choices that were made you know, with some thought and care about why I did it. And so part of our approach is going to be, how do we come up with the best visualization? We do that by thinking about all the different aspects of it. Now, this figure is not perfect. In fact, it's not even close to perfect. This figure is, in fact, the beginning of an, of an assignment in class, which is take this figure and now make it better. And so I give it to the students, and the students spend some time trying to figure out what can they do to make this a better figure. Better in the sense of communicating more ideas, better in the sense of making it clearer or easier to understand. Right? Uh, and so that's the kind of thing that we're going to be doing in this class. The class kind of finishes up with a, a big capstone project. You can work in small groups. You decide what your question is you want to answer. You go out and you find the data that you need to do it. You do the analysis, and you write it up. Right? Um, students in the past have come up with some really great ideas, done some really great projects, some on, econ some on economic topics, some not, some on art, some on music, uh, some on, on food, uh, theater. Uh, you know, data is used all over for lots of different kinds of fields, so why not use it for all different kinds of projects? Uh, students have gone on to go get master's degrees, you know, with doing this kind of stuff afterwards. I've had students who have used this project uh, as part of their portfolios and gone on to get, you know, jobs or research assistantships. Uh, the course kind of gives you a good kind of overall view of what it's like to take data and move it all the way through uh, a kind of project, a question-based project, and then using data in order to answer these questions. Thank you, Professor Rule and Professor McKelvey for those wonderful descriptions of Econ 400, 410, and 570. Hello, everyone. My name is Madison Hartup, and I am also an undergraduate academic advisor. We know this has been a lot of information, and you may have some questions. If you have more questions about the certificate, be sure to check out our frequently asked questions below. If your question still isn't answered from the FAQs, you can visit our office during designated drop-in hours to meet with Alicia, Nick, or me. Our drop-in hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to noon, as well as on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to noon and 2 to 4 p.m. Our office is located on the seventh floor of the Social Sciences Building in room 7238. If you're interested in declaring the certificate today, be sure to fill out the certificate declaration form. 
You can find the form by clicking on the link that says Declare Certificate in Economic Analytics on the right side of the page. Remember, this certificate is for any student who is not already a declared economics major. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.